Good Thursday morning, and thanks for checking out your latest long-range forecast. Michael Clark here with BMW X. This is my third attempt at trying to make this video this morning, so we got to make this one count because I'm tired of trying. Let's take a look here at rainfall forecast over the next 24 hours across portions of the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes. Some folks here are going to be looking at the potential of a half inch, maybe three quarters of an inch of rain as a front moves through. Overall, though, a, a rather quiet weather pattern for the rest of the country, especially central U.S., uh, western U.S., and up into the east and northeast for today. Uh, today. Not a, an incredibly active pattern. You can see here, just looking at radar this morning, 7.30 eastern time, there's the front and there's the, the rain moving through uh, the Ohio Valley here this morning. So let's take a look in terms of what to expect over the next couple of days. This is just the latest GFS computer model. There's the front moving through. This area of low pressure will become a bit more organized uh, with another low off the, the coast of the Carolinas there. Those two will kind of link up and phase together, and a stronger low pressure system will develop uh, up there in New England, portions of uh, the northeast up the east coast, uh, and uh, produce some wind and some rain, some heavy wind and rain up there uh, as we get into late week into the weekend. Okay, High pressure works in behind this system, and it will be rather uneventful, rather dry, for the next couple of days until the next rain chance starts to work in Monday and Tuesday of next week as the high moves to the east. We get in on that southerly, southwesterly flow and we'll work in a storm system that will start to uh, develop here. By next Tuesday or Wednesday, rain breaks out across the Great Lakes, central U.S. as the pattern becomes a little bit more active. Um, and a bigger storm system is possible later next week, possibly bringing snow to the northern plains and thunderstorms and in, in perhaps in the fashion of some severe weather later next week across the Midwest and the Great Lakes. Okay, Then we are continuing to watch the pattern uh, overall evolve into much more active, much more heavy rainfall threat later next week and the next weekend, especially for the Deep South and maybe even into the Ohio Valley and Northeast. That'll bring a big shot of cooler air. Look at that Arctic high coming down. You throw in um, 1040 area of high pressure there near Halloween, and it's cold. All right, so it looks like a cooler Halloween. The storm system should be east of the area by then, and perhaps it's uh, just dry and, and chilly. All right, so active pattern coming. Um, look here at rainfall the next seven days. We are going to look at the potential for the heaviest rain across the central and southern plains, Texas, um, Oklahoma, Kansas, portions of Nebraska. Some of the, the latest data runs are drier for Iowa, which is interesting, um, but this particular solution we're showing you does indicate that uh, an inch or so of, of rainfall is possible here over the next seven days up into the Great Lakes. There's your northeast uh, rain there, too. That's a lot of rain here this weekend from that area of low pressure. Okay, Here's the pattern overall. This is the GEFS. Listen, we saw the models come in last night. We saw the warmer European model come in. We're kind of backing off of that for now in terms of not really in total agreement based on what we're seeing in East Asia, based on everything we know to be true with the pattern. We still are anticipating a bigger cold front uh, for the end of the month. Okay, There's the low pressure system there. Let's take you out through uh, the end of the week into early next week. This big ridge here that you see in the south and east with the trough back to the west, um, this is really kind of a classic response to the negative global wind pattern, the negative AAM that we've been seeing, uh, warm in the east with a front that runs into it. Listen, if we didn't have this, this recurve in the western Pacific Ocean, uh, the odds of a cold shot here late month would probably be pretty slim, to be quite honest with you. A lot of the analogs, a lot of the research, and, and all the years we're looking at, really, are they're warm. Um, and, and, and that's why I think, again, we're looking at a mid-November warm-up, probably pretty substantial at this rate. We'll keep, uh, keep an eye on that. Nonetheless, that front does come through. It is a result of the, the Western Pacific trough uh, buckling the jet for a time and allowing no October to end cold and November to open cold, um, but it, that that may be short-lived. We look at the week two uh, super clusters, if you will, looking at all the ensemble members. It's a high confidence forecast and the cold sweeping down into the area with an active pattern uh, precipitation to run well above the average for many folks here. In fact, this is week one on the top. You can see it here across the central plains. 150 to as much as 350 percent of the normal precipitation not out of the question and then week two uh, check this out here uh, again wet for a lot of the big uh, you know a lot of the central u.s here okay um, and again 
for a time, I think there's a couple of systems in there that can bring storms, maybe some snow on the north and west side. But if you look like days 13, 14, 15, um, the pattern actually quiets down after the front moves through. It's really cold. It's a big cold shot. But this here, this week two forecast, a lot of this is, is, is front loaded on the first part of week two. Uh, the second part of that gets drier and less active, okay? A lot of this is hinged on right now the, the, the behavior of the negative angular momentum that we've been uh, seeing now for quite some time. There's another image I wanted to show you real quick. It was this image here that I created at the HDD forecast and talking about this for next week. Here we go right here. I want to pull that up. Uh, we, we anticipate above normal heating demand for sure for a time to end the month. In fact, move my camera over real quick. You can see down here in the bottom right, this is the, the 30th, 31st, 1st, and 2nd of November. Again, the EPS being the warmer solution out of all these. The Canadian, the American, and the CFS model, again, continuing to indicate um, some pretty cold temperatures there. But like I was saying, it's all driven by this very long-running negative angular momentum. There's been a few years where we've had things like this happen. And in similarities with ENZO and the MJO, okay, I know we're throwing out fancy terms here, but um, basically the teleconnections across the, the, the world indicating, um, giving us high confidence in the outlook ahead, if you will. There's really, there's really no, um, no big questions in the November forecast right now. Uh, if you look at things, it's wet. If you look at the latest CFS forecast for the month, it's wet, a little bit drier to the east. And that's possibly the because it's going to continue to run warmer in the east, colder out west, and in between there's a battle zone there. Okay, um, and, and and the pattern resembles that in the North Pacific. You know, you look at the look at the, the the ridging in the North Pacific, the Aleutian Islands with the the low pressure further uh, back out in the in the northwestern Pacific up there in the Kamchatka Peninsula. I always like to say that, right? It makes me sound like I'm really really smart. Um, but this is, you know, you can kind of see that the November pattern surfacing there, but even taking this all the way out, the North Pacific pattern is really dominated um, by ridging. And our methods where we kind of look at things outside of the box suggest that that's an indication of a, at least a risk of a warmer November. And I talked about the MJO. When you look at the, the phases of the MJO, the 8-1 uh, phase of the MJO and the, and the indications of us staying there, that's not going to allow the, the global wind pattern to go positive. Those phases of the MJO in November are warm east and wet in the central U.S. And our top November analogs are the same. Okay, That's what these look like. They are very, very warm east and they're very wet in the central U.S. And so I don't really have a reason to disagree or go against that right now. This is what I believe November looks like. It can start cold, but I think it can get warm pretty quickly and the majority of the month can be can be warm for the central and eastern U.S. and stormy as well, okay? So that's a rundown, latest pattern analysis. Again, still looking at a, a, a big cold front and, a, and some rain and some, and some storms for just leading up to Halloween. Halloween's looking cold for most folks, at least colder than average. Um, and then beyond that, we may work in some warmer weather into November. So if you have questions, as always, feel free to reach out. Let us know. Have a great day.